an entitled old man in Walmart hits me with his cart after I wasn't going fast enough in the line I was in, and I honestly could not be more upset. So two weeks ago, I was admitted to the ER after having a stroke, and I was finally discharged last Friday, only for my clumsy self to trip on a rug in the lobby on my way out after being discharged, falling directly on my face and banging up my knee pretty good. What luck, am I right? So now I'm back to using a walker since my leg is still hurting and I can't fully straighten it. The next day, my dad and I head to Walmart because we need to get something for his car and I was looking for some multivitamins and nutritional shakes or whatever. We gather up what we need and head to the checkout line. We didn't have much, literally carrying things in our hands. Well, he was. I had my stuff in my walker, but it wasn't really much. Five of our things in total combined. Surprisingly, the checkout line we were at wasn't as full as one would normally expect, and we were only third in line before we were next. There's a few closed, and the furthest one away didn't have many people either, and the self-checkout lanes were basically empty. There was another cashier next to our lane, but was closed as she was about to go on break, and that's when the entitled old man comes in. He comes around with a cart full of whatever and makes his way to the now-closed cashier, to which she explains that she was bagging up her last customer, stating that the lane was closed. The old man grumbles and mumbles about the lines being too long, even though they weren't. And after looking around to see the other lanes, he decides to get behind me instead. Now, the cashier at our lane was busy making small talk with her co-worker, not really paying attention to the customer, waiting for the transaction to finish, as they had swiped their card ready to pay. This entitled old man pipes up and he says, Hope they're having a nice conversation, but not loud enough for the cashier to hear him. But no one really pays attention to him. He sighs loudly, then proceeds to step next to me and ask, Hey, you mind letting me go ahead? I'm in a bit of a rush. Again, he has a full cart, whereas my dad and I only have five or so items. I respond by saying, Sorry, but so are we, and we don't have a lot of stuff. We won't be long. This entitled old man decides that this isn't an acceptable answer and mumbles to himself some swear word as he steps back behind me. The cashier finally finishes with the customer up front. One more to go, and now my dad and I are second in line. As we slowly move forward, this entitled old man pushes his cart forward and hits the back of my legs, shouting, Hey, move it already! Hurry it up! As if it's somehow my fault it's taking too long. As mentioned before, I had fallen, and I was still pretty hurt, so I let out a yelp, and my dad instantly spun around in a panic, as did the cashier and the customer in front of us. I turn and I glare at this old man, and his face is turning a shade of red with an angry scowl. My dad yells out, Hey, what's your problem, man? What are you doing? People notice what's going on and put two and two together. The cashier says, Sir, if you can't calm down and wait and stop causing a disturbance, I'll call security and I'll have you escorted out. This finally puts the old man in his place because he turns and shoves his cart to the side and steps out of line. He screeches, You all are taking too long and walks away instead, thinking that he's won, only for us to see him come back for his cart and get in a different and long longer line as we are leaving the store, which honestly was just a huge waste of everyone's time. People at Walmart, man, they are just so unhinged. And it's so weird that this guy would act like this, especially when there's a guy in front of him who can barely walk and there's clear indications right in front of him that this guy is injured and he has things going on. So hopefully they don't have to deal with this guy ever again because he sounds unhinged as well as just a little bit crazy. An entitled crazy Karen freaks out on me and accuses me of reselling baby formula that I'm simply just trying to buy for my child. And when I try to get away, she follows me around the store, screaming at the top of her lungs that I'm stealing from her. Here's what happened. So first, a little backstory. My wife and I had our first child this year. It was a heck of a year for a child that needs to have formula too, by the way. We are always searching everywhere near us for formula every time that we start running low. And we will usually try to grab two of the largest containers we can get, making sure to keep within the store guidelines on how many they will let customers have. I do want to feed my kid, but I don't want to take from others who may need it also. So that way we can make sure we always have food for him. Which leads me to the beginning of the week. We were searching again because our stores were running low and we would need more before the middle of the week. Searching for the specific formula that we needed was leading to us maybe having to take a trip out of state just so we could feed our son. We checked one more time through the Walmart app and one of the locations thankfully in our town had the formula we needed. I rushed over to
to the store, hoping that they had not sold out. I got there and luckily they had it. I grabbed two and I called my wife to see if she wanted me to get more. They had 10 in total and the store had a limit of six. She told me to only get two because she didn't want others to do without. So I hung up with her and I put them into my cart. And that's when I heard the most shrill voice say, what do you think you're doing? I turn around and I see this entitled Karen who looks a little bit older than me. I could be wrong. I've always been kind of terrible at guessing someone's age. She says to give the formula to her because she needed it for her kid and I must just be reselling it. I looked at her and I nervously laughed a little and said, no, I have a son and he needs the formula. She then just simply replied that she does not care at all and that her baby needs it more. I look at her and again, I say, no, I am taking this because my son needs it. There are literally eight more on the shelf while also pointing out that the limit is six so she can grab as many as she likes. But she is having none of it and starts pushing to my cart to take my son's food. I made sure to protect it and to move the cart in a way that she couldn't act like I was being aggressive and trying to hit her. I am a bigger man and some would call me scary or intimidating because I have the kind of face that can definitely be seen as scary looking. So I knew I had to be careful with this weird entitled Karen. This set her off as she started screaming that I was stealing from her and her child, stating that I wanted her child to starve because I was just reselling formula. I walked away before I would lose my cool and she actually started following me through the store, trying to get people to force me to give her the formula that she needed so badly. She finally found a manager and started trying to keep me there. I simply said I am within the limit and while she was focused on them, I booked it. She must have looked around because she couldn't find me and she just started screaming like a mad person. While people were heading towards her, I calmly but with a little bit faster of a pace made my way to check out and I paid. With my son's food, I got in my car and I laid low for a few seconds not knowing if she had found me and was just actually following me. As I was pulling out of my spot in the rear view mirror, I saw her running out of the front door looking wildly to see if I was still there. I pulled out of there while calling my wife to tell her all about this and let me just tell you, my wife was seething with anger. All I have to say is thank God that this Walmart is on the opposite side of town. I do kind of feel bad because in the back of my mind, I have the thoughts of what if they really did need it. But you know what? I have to feed my son. That's my responsibility as a parent and this lady can go get her own. What an absolute psychopath. She tries to hunt you down in the middle of Walmart pretending like you stole some formula out of her basket. Like is this lady just crazy or something? She literally could have just grabbed any of the other eight ones that were on the counter. Like what is wrong with this lady? I just don't understand why she flipped out. There is literally more formula on the shelf. She probably just wanted to try and grab all of it for herself and be that person that just takes everything. So honestly, to the original poster, don't feel bad for a second. There was literally no reason for her to act like that. And you know what? If I was in your shoes, I would have booked it away from her as well. And I bet you she was projecting exactly what she was going to do. There's a part of me that thinks she was probably reselling it, which would probably explain why she was freaking out about you taking the formula. So good for you for getting out of there like freaking James Bond or something like that. Because this lady is crazy and hopefully you never run into her ever again. My boyfriend called me spoiled for expecting a birthday gift and I honestly don't know what to do. I've been dating my boyfriend for over nine months now. I celebrated my birthday a couple of days ago and my boyfriend took me out to dinner and watched a movie to celebrate in advance since he would be busy on my actual birthday. It was a lovely date and I honestly really appreciated it. Just for some backstory, his birthday was a couple of months ago. I bought him gifts that I put so much thought and effort into and I really wanted to get him something that I knew he would love. I also expressed to him through random conversations that I don't count food or abstract things as gifts from my significant other because I'm really sentimental as a person when it comes to objects. I love keeping things like movie tickets and even random leaves and things that have significant meaning to me. So I was starting to get the gut feeling that he didn't get me anything because days have passed since my birthday. So I jokingly brought up asking where my gift is since he showed me a picture of a watch he just bought for himself as an early Christmas gift. When I brought it up, he said, I don't know what to get you. And when he said that, I felt really sad because I felt like he didn't know me at all. Why does he need to ask me? I put so much thought and effort into his birthday gift. When I expressed to him that I felt bad when he said that, he blew up on me and said I was completely 
completely spoiled. And it's like I don't even see the things that he does for me. He said that our dinner date was my birthday gift. And it was too bad for me if I wanted more than that. He was just lashing out at me and blaming me for making it a big deal. How do I even begin to handle this situation? What should I do? Your boyfriend is being a complete jerk. It's really disappointing to see how he's acting towards your birthday. I mean, you put so much thought into the gift you gave him. I think it's then completely normal to expect something in return from him. And you've made it known to him exactly how you feel. Food and abstract things such as gifts just don't mean as much to you as getting something from the heart. And yeah, that's probably a little bit trickier to shop for or even coming up for ideas that you might enjoy in general. But that's no excuse not to try. So honestly, the way your boyfriend is acting is completely out of line. And if I was in your shoes, I would definitely have a conversation with him. Not with the expectation that you want to get a gift or anything like that. I feel like that stage is past and you're probably just not going to get anything, but more so that you can explain yourself and say, hey, this really hurt my feelings. So if you do decide to do that, hopefully it goes well, because your boyfriend's reaction to you asking about a gift is completely out of line, and I honestly don't think you're spoiled in the slightest for expecting some kind of gift on your birthday. An entitled Karen wreaks havoc at a hotel, causing disruptions and making up lies about my fellow co-workers. But after hearing all the constant lies, I simply had had enough. So I put her in her place in a really fantastic way. And now as a result, she's choosing to represent herself in a court of law as she tries to sue the hotel. Here's what happened. Since I started as a front desk agent at a three-star business hotel earlier this past summer, there has been this elderly woman who has slowly but surely descended into complete delusional and harassing behavior. The first story I ever heard of was in our shift notes. She was complaining to one of my co-workers that it was dangerous to have foreigners in the hotel because they apparently to her carry a disease. She later told me that a technical issue with her TV was probably the Chinese. Ridiculous stuff like that. She also said people of color staying at this hotel have complained about her for inching away from them or generally breaking social norms. She also told a black police academy student that she doesn't support his profession while also backing away from him slowly, which put me in a super great position between valid Validating this guest perspective that this was a skin color thing while trying not to gossip about other guests. But in retrospect, I should have validated him completely without referencing her other actions, which is a lesson learned for me. Months go by and every week, this guest requests her folio printed out and sent to her, which is normal, but the way she did it was very rude. She said, Can I have my folio? Even though your manager overprices the market items. Or something like that with a little guffaw to flourish the interaction with passive aggression. Fast forward a couple of months and she started saying that we're trying to harm her and that we're being violent, that the engineers threw corrosive acid on her fridge and that her doctor said she has an infection caused by the chemicals used to clean her carpet. We didn't even use chemicals. It was just warm and maybe soapy water. And then she turned around and said we ought to be cleaning her carpet properly. So she lies routinely about us trying to poison her. She also called the desk one night sounding like she was choking. The person at the front desk that night called 911 because it sounded like the guest couldn't breathe. The front desk went back on the line with the guest who was suddenly perfectly fine and said that she just choked on her coffee. When the front desk told her that emergency services were on the way, she said oh let them come and then kept them for upwards of 30 minutes to tell them about the trials and tribulations she faces at our property. She's made one of our night shift workers sob because she threatened to send the worker by the name of Sarah to jail. She has no power to do this, obviously, and Sarah did nothing illegal, but this worker is very, very sensitive and has apparently been falsely accused and consequently faced jail time in the past, so the whole thing was very traumatizing to her. The nightmare guest follows her around during her night shift and films her doing her night shift duties to document her supposed illegal activities. But you know what? I don't think cleaning the pool area is a crime, but whatever. The morning I came in to see Sarah sobbing in the office of this woman's abuse was one of glorious catharsis in the end. The nightmare guest came to the desk while Sarah was still there at the adjacent desk. She asked me to print all 48 of her folios or something like that. I was cold and civil as I always have been with her. She started talking to me about Sarah's illegal behavior and the false accusations and some other delusional garbage. Sarah is a very petite, high-pitched voiced woman that says sorry way too much, and I was naturally feeling very protective. Our exchange
message went as follows. I told her not to talk to me about Sarah and that I wasn't interested in what she had to say. She got all huffy and says, I am a paying customer. As if that means I have to do whatever she wants and be told lies and a bunch of information I couldn't even do anything about even if it was true. I snap back and I say, actually, you're a nightmare. She then gets all angry and shaky in the way that only senior citizens can and says she won't be spoken to in this disrespectful tone. To which I respond, oh yeah? How's it feel, lady? This whole time, I kept my voice down to avoid disturbing guests in the breakfast area, which ended up being absolutely pointless. Sarah then starts yelling at this guest for trying to intimidate her, as well as threatening her freedom. I put my hands gently on Sarah's shoulder and very gently pushed her towards the back office and shut the door in an effort to try and de-escalate the situation. Another co-worker actually called the police, which seemed extra but whatever, who ended up taking statements from the guest and my manager. All of this happened before 8 o'clock in the morning. We tried to kick her out, but in our region, any guest inhabiting any accommodation for upwards of 30 days have tenant rights. So a formal eviction was filed. She somehow convinced the judge that this should go to a jury trial. There was a hearing about this, and she has been scheduled for a full jury trial. Months from now, she is literally like a stubborn Victorian ghost. She walks the halls all night, and her moods are so erratic. It's really sad, honestly, but mostly just pathetic and annoying. She hates us. She hates the property. She feels harassed and unsafe, and accuses everyone that talks back to her of violence. Even if all we do is tell her to leave us alone and stop repeating all these details of fictional events that most of us have no control over anyways. And yet, she still won't leave. She is also literally representing herself in trial, which I can't believe is also going to be supported by taxpayer dollars purely by existing. She has also sued multiple major hotels for conspiracy to harm, overcharging, as well as lots of other things. And she has been dismissed every time in the end. She is nothing but a con artist, and I honestly can't wait to see her fail again. Let me just put it this way. If they were selling tickets to this trial, I'd be the first one in line. This lady sounds absolutely crazy, and you are absolutely right. Not only is this going to get dismissed, but if it does go to trial by some miracle, all this mounting evidence against her for being blatantly racist, as well as a menace to the employees that work there, as well as the other guests that occupy the hotel, all of this will just come crashing down on her. So hopefully she gets banned from this place for good, and you guys never have to deal with her again. Because actions like this absolutely deserve to have consequences. And just because she's some old woman doesn't mean that she should get away with this. My partner is constantly giving me such a terrible attitude and accusing me of things that I've never done in the first place. And I honestly don't know what to do. So I've been with my partner for eight years now. I think overall we have a very healthy relationship. We generally have good communication and good conflict resolution, even after fighting. We're able to share concerns and feedback in a mature way. That being said, he's been dealing with amplified anxiety for the past two years, and it's resulting in some new behavior that I'm struggling to effectively address. He wakes up many days in a pretty bad mood, dreading the workday, and can be very unpleasant. I do my best to give him space to wake up and get ready for his day. However, recently he's been approaching me in the morning with complaints as well as things that he's upset about and doing it in a very negative way and speaking to me in an unacceptable manner. Sometimes these complaints are related to me and sometimes they're not. For example, this morning he was trying to implement an IT update that he couldn't figure out. After a lot of complaining, he asked for my help and I said I'd try my best but this isn't my strongest area. He stormed out of the room saying, fine, don't help me. I calmly followed him and restated that I'm happy to look. I just want him to know that I'm not confident that I'll be able to figure it out. I feel the need to set this expectation to limit his future frustration. While showing me what he was looking at, he was talking to me in an extremely rude way. Just a really terrible attitude. Very short and snippy and even raised his voice. This came out of nowhere so I let it go for a few minutes. At one point, he made a comment about hating IT, and I reinforced his opinion by saying, yeah, this stuff is usually so frustrating. He started talking again with such an extreme attitude that I had to stop him and tell him not to talk to me like that. I know he is frustrated, but he cannot take it out on me. He then started accusing me of being the one with an attitude and being upset. When I questioned why he thought those things, he couldn't give me an answer, and then accused me of thinking he's stupid and giving him an attitude earlier that 
that morning that he was still mad about. I feel like that is a ridiculous example, but some variation happens almost every other morning, and it's really stressing me out a lot. He approaches me in a way that he normally does not, and then completely refuses to acknowledge that he's doing it, flipping it on me 100% of the time, saying stuff like, I'm not doing that, you are. He does it so often now that I pay very close attention to how I'm responding when he talks to me in this way. He will even go as far as to accuse me of rolling my eyes, raising my voice, or stuff along those lines, even though I absolutely am not doing that. I am by no means perfect, but I'm very relaxed and happy in the morning. I am confident that I'm not instigating any of these situations. Most of the time, I don't acknowledge his behavior in the moment at all. I give calm, short answers to what he says. We've had some productive conversations about this pattern, so it is lessening a little in frequency, but I feel like the intensity is rising. I know he's dealing with external stress, but this is not how he typically treats me. He usually reflects on it afterwards and recognizes he was at least part of the problem, but he continues to do it. It's very hard to deal with in the moment because it feels like he's creating his own narrative to justify his own behavior. Most of the time, I can just ignore it, but when he says things that are so clearly made up, it's hard not to take the bait, and I honestly don't know what to do. This is really unfortunate because based on what you've described, your partner really is being very toxic, and it really does sound like therapy of some kind might be really useful in helping him sort this out. There really is so much you can do in this situation. You've had a discussion about it. He even admits that he goes too far sometimes, and yet still he does it all over again. So it honestly overall is just really unfair for you. So hopefully all of this works out, and you're able to find some kind of solution to this, because you honestly should not be talked to like this, and he really does need to straighten out his attitude. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the Cream of the Crop music. Search Cream of the Stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright-free music to use for your next stream.